When I see Arturo Sandoval play, that's the way he plays. It looks like a bulldog. And, and Maynard playing Hynos looks just like this. The, 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 the jaw and the lips and everything are so firmed up. And, and then these muscles are really gigantic and look very firm. Players like Vince look effortless. Same with Doc. You know that the work is going on, but they're not unhinging their jaw and coming forward, or at least not much. So when you unhinge the jaw and bring it forward, you don't have that socket to, to stabilize the mouthpiece pressure and resistance that you're giving it. So the muscles have to do it. And you develop strong muscles, and, it, and you can develop good control with it. Obviously, there's many great players that play that way. But you have to be careful because some people later in life develop TMJ, which is a, you know, uh, starts to get migraines, migraine headaches and uh, cramps in the muscles back here. But most people have a slight overbite. So when they wake up in the morning, they unhinge, and they leave it unhinged all day long. They talk, they chew their food, they play the trumpet. Everything is unhinged except when they go to sleep. Then it goes back. And when you look at them while they're sleeping, their chin is like way back there. Now, if you're blessed with, with a very good occlusion of your teeth and with proper training of how to pucker, you really got something going for you. And I, and I always hope that I have students that play that way, but I've had only a handful out of hundreds and hundreds of students that played that way. So anyways, you need to understand that there's two types, uh, that there's different methods for each a little bit, and things to encourage a student to bring out or do. Uh, oh, I see Eddie Tarr sitting over there. Ed plays like Vince. I was watching him especially play his recital the other day. He plays uh, like Severinsen and Vince, and you know, it's, it's the best way. If I could construct a trumpet player, that's how I would want their jaw alignment and everything to, to work. Um, so, it, but as a teacher, you have to remember that, you know, a student comes in, they, they probably, you know, have had some guidance, but maybe not a lot, and they have many issues to work out. And you can't just say, well, here's how I play, do it. Because if it doesn't work, you're going to have a very low percentage of your students that are going to be successful. And if you're willing to try different ideas, your, your percentage will go much higher. Are there any questions about the fluttered tongue and the, you know, the Sambusher business? Yes, sir. Uh, do you anchor tongue or do you use the, what's that? Okay, so he uses the tip of the tongue, you know, up and down like a flutter tongue. And, but, but you hit a brick wall when you get to about quarter note equals 80, 90, da 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 you know, like that. Well, who hasn't hit that brick wall? <laughs> I mean, everybody hits that brick wall. And I think what you need to be really careful of is, is it, can you flutter tongue? If you can flutter with the front of the tongue, then make sure that your, your single tongue motion is identical, that they feel the same, because your body's trying to tell you with your flutter tongue, that's the quickest, easiest, most relaxed, fastest way to do it. And copy it. Um, it there's a natural tendency as we play, as we tongue faster, to move the tongue forward. And it starts tonguing really hard on the teeth. Nothing wrong with tonguing on the teeth. I do it a lot. Nothing wrong with that, but for sheer speed, there's a spot where it probably isn't up forward on the teeth. If you're, depends on the, you know, your, your length of tongue and so forth. If you're normal tonguing when you're in rest position in your mouth, and then you just say, da, 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 da. You can say that out loud. Tell me, how many of you touch your top teeth when you say, da, da, da? Or is it really on the hard palate just behind the top teeth? Da. How many, how many are on the teeth when they say that? How many do it more on the hard palate, maybe just this far back? That's where most people are. So your body's trying to tell you that's the, that's the easy action right there. But as we go faster, we tend to move the tongue forward. And it wants to get tight and stutters. The tongue is a very large, strong muscle. It goes clear down to the larynx or the, the voice box. Um, 
once, you, once it gets tight, it's going to start choking off your tone. It's going to, it stutters. You feel like you, your head's going to explode, you know? But if you can keep it. I'm, I'm making sure it's in that same spot. And the same is true with double tongue. I'll give you an example. Let me, let me double tongue and I'll start slowly and I'll go faster. And this time, as I go faster, I'm going to move the tongue gradually forward. I feel like I'm, you know, blowing against a brick wall. But if I, now this time what I'll do is I'll let it come forward and then I'll pull it back where it should have been in the first place. It's like someone stopped strangling me. You know, you just got to find that, that easy spot. And sometimes it takes a lot of experimenting. It may take days, weeks, months, but hang in there. Everybody has their best spot. And it may not be where the next person's place is. So, you, you know, you experiment. Any other questions about this subject, Mike? Yeah, his question was, uh, do we talk about these physical things out loud so the student hears all this mechanical talk and understands it? And the answer is yes. I try to teach my students that they're going to have to teach themselves, probably be teaching others. They need to understand these things. They run into a problem, they have to be able to fix it. And to me, it's like being a race car driver and then also working on your own engine. You can be a mechanic, and that's one thing. You, once you step into the driver's seat, you shut all that off, and you can do it. I, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that um, it just takes some practice. Sometimes a little bit of information does more damage than no information at all, because they know just enough to get in trouble, right? Um, so you make sure they thoroughly understand it and they experiment we talk about different methods, we experiment with it and say, this is what seems to work for you. And then once they usually find it, it's like learning how to ride a bicycle, they, they just naturally fall into it, but they remember. And, and uh, it's really, it's, you know, I don't think we should keep the secrets from them, you know. Um, sometimes you can do it very subtly, but if it's a real actual mechanical problem, they need to understand what, what it is we're trying to fix. Always using the sound as the guide. When it sounds right, it's right. End of story. If it sounds right, it's right. I don't care where your embouchure is. I don't care how you articulate. If it sounds right, you're done. It's great. And I've and